The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All Hit Radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome to the Exxon, everyone. I am Rob McConnell, and we're coming to you from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. And you're watching us on the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV and listening to us around the world on iHeartRadio, Spotify, Mutual Broadcast Network, the Exxon Broadcast Network, and of course, Talkstar Radio Network. If you'd like to send me an email, exxon at exxonradiotv.com on all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV. And to find out about the programming we have available for you 24 7, 365 on the Exxon Broadcast Network, visit www.xzbn.net. And for our programming schedule on the Exxon TV channel, go to simultv.com. My guest this hour, Exxon Nation, is a gentleman we've had the pleasure of having on before. His name is Dan Baldwin. But tonight we're talking to Dan about his new book entitled Psychic Detective Guidebook. And uh, Dan's website is danbaldwin.biz. And Dan, welcome back to the Exxon. Oh, it's good to be back. Delightful to talk to you again. Yeah, you and I were talking before we went to air, and it was yeah. it's it's a very cold 103 in in Mesa, Arizona. Uh, Mesa, Arizona. Yeah, it's it's down to 103. So does that mean you turn the heaters on tonight and you put yeah, on it's, your it's woolly what we jacket? Call sweater weather. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I I I'm starting to sweat just thinking of 103. <laughs> but then yeah, once it hits about 108, it it just it's hot. You were telling me yesterday or the day before it was up to 113? Yeah, yesterday we hit 100, 112 yesterday. Oh, my good God. Yeah. And uh, is this natural uh, weather for, for Arizona, or is this the non-existent thing called climate control? It's uh, it's non-existent thing called climate yeah. control. It's, uh, it happens, uh, well, let's see, every summer it gets mm-hmm. hot. It's amazing. But this summer is a little extra hot? Not really. Uh, Twenty years ago, when we moved in, it uh, the day we moved in our, our house, the day we moved the heavy furniture, it got up to 122. Whoa! And where did you move? Where did you move to Arizona from? Yeah, we were uh, born. My wife and I were born and raised in uh, Northwest Louisiana. Oh, so we moved from the swamp to the desert. Well, no happy medium with you, is there? <laughs> uh, yeah. Dan, tell us a little bit about yourself for the listeners who weren't with us last time you uh, joined us. Yeah. Well, basically. Uh, I am a uh, self-employed writer, full-time mm-hmm. writer. I uh, have about 60 books to my credit that have been published. Uh, 50 of them have somebody else's name on the cover. Uh, I'm a, what they call a ghost writer. Right. But I've also got about uh, 10 or 12 books uh, that are novels or short story collections to my name. And recently uh, I've gotten involved in this, you know, as you know, this paranormal thing. So right. I've, getting, I've gotten, uh, let's see, I have uh, six books on the paranormal out now, nonfiction works. Wow. Uh what what is your favorite aspect in the paranormal? My favorite aspect is uh kind of like uh in my in my ghost writing e- everything is new every day is a new adventure every day is, is a new excitement every day you learn something new about right. the paranormal and and what got you interested in the paranormal i've got to credit my friends uh and co-authors Dwight and Rhonda Hull from uh, southern Arizona right. Yeah, we uh, you've interviewed them before, mm-hmm. but on our book, uh, you know, speaking with spirits of the old Southwest, right? 
they got me inter- interested in going down and exploring, you know, ghost towns and haunted houses and places like that. And I really uh, basically got infected with it. I mean, I, I love doing that. And uh, out of that, where Sergio came, that book, and uh, that's that's kind of where my uh, my my psychic career is now trending towards more paranormal research. So, and but as I said earlier before uh, before the program, yeah, I've got like fifteen or so years of psychic uh, detecting mm-hmm. behind me. So I thought uh, I'm not really leaving that that field, but I'm moving into another area. I I thought I would put that experience to use and uh, put it in the book and leave it behind so maybe I can help somebody else who's interested in becoming a psychic detecting detective. What, how old were you when you first discovered that you had the gift of being a psychic? Really, uh, I am a self-described psychic on training wheels. I came to it rather <laughs> late in life. In fact, a true story. I mean, I, I came to it about, uh, I guess the realization hit when I was about 50 years old. I'm mm-hmm. 68 now. But you know, looking back, I can see that uh, you know there are, there are episodes all the way through my life that I just didn't recognize. And but what, I became aware of it at about okay. age fifty. Wow! What was it like the yeah. first time you realized that you were a psychic in training, and that you had to get yourself some training wheels? Really, when uh, I was working uh, uh, missing missing kid cases by myself, I, mm-hmm. I just felt drawn to do that. Right. That's what brought me into it, and I got to meet several psychics who were also doing the same thing, and we would meet and discuss a case and, and things like that. And the other psychics are the, actually the, the ones who told me, you know, Dan, you need to really start doing this seriously. Uh, you know, like the rest of us, you have a gift, you need to put it to use. So really that was kind of uh, my first validation that, yeah, maybe there is something to this. Maybe maybe I'm one of the ones that can do it. When you were growing up in Louisiana, did you ever experience the psychic phenomenon and and when you did, what did you do about it? Oh, well, as a kid, and I did nothing about it. As a oh. kid, I would say, uh, you know, I would tell my mother, hey, my uh, my aunt is about, the phone, about mm-hmm. to call you. And then the phone would ring, and it would be my aunt. Or I would say something like, uh, you know, the postman is about to arrive. He's got a package for you. Yeah. You know, you know, five minutes later, the postman would arrive with a package. That You know, that sort of thing. And I really n- never thought about it. Well, the same thing happened to me when I was a kid. I was walking. We lived in uh, Chambly, and uh, to get to the home from the highway where the bus let you off, it was about a mile and a half walk, and you, it was beautiful. It was right beside a river, and, you know, it was the best place in the world for a kid to grow up. In the winter, oh, yeah. we had, we had uh, you know, uh, skating rinks on the river. We had the riverbanks for tobogganing. In the summertime, it was fishing. It was just great. But this one day, I'm walking home and uh, past a couple of the neighbors, and I get home, and my mom says, so how are you today? I said, fine. I said, by the way, Mrs. Bracken's pregnant. And my mother just looked at me, and she said, what? I said, Mrs. Bracken <laughs> is pregnant. Now, Mrs. Bracken was not married. Oops. Yeah. Her husband, he, she and her husband had been divorced. She already had about six or seven kids. And my mother said, I'm going to call up Pat right now. And if you're lying, I'm going to give you a smack in the face. <laughs> well, my mother gets a hold of Pat on the phone. And I'm standing there saying, oh, I'm going to get a hitting. I'm going to get a beating. And, uh, you know, my mother asked Pat if she was pregnant. And Pat said, of course not, Lottie. You know, come on. Anyway, to make a long story short, it was about six, seven months later when Mrs. Bracken gave birth, and um, ever since that time, I got that hit for telling the truth. I blocked it. Yeah, I did. Uh, I did too. I wish at the time someone had told me, "Hey, you know, Dan, you've got a little gift here. You yeah. really got to start developing it." But you know, back then, you know, I was in the fifties, fifties and early. 70s. Wow. You just hello. Yeah, I'm still here. I. I'm still here. Okay, yeah. Just, uh, you know, that was something that uh, just wasn't discussed. Yeah, it it was, really wasn't encouraged. That's right. And yet, you know, later on in life, during my during my uh, years as a police officer, whether it was in patrol or on criminal investigations, that gift came in very handy. And I think a lot of cops have it because we, you know, we talk about that gut feeling we got. Because nobody well, wanted yeah, that, to. In fact, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go, you know, because no, nobody that wants just to. just happened to me the other day. I was making a presentation. Again, I went back to Louisiana. Right. I was making a presentation to a club, mm-hmm. and there was a policeman there, 
And he was a skeptic. I, yeah, I asked him directly. He said, uh, do you believe in psychic phenomena? He said, no. Yeah. I said, do you believe in cop instinct? He said, well, yeah, obviously. No difference. Yeah, I said, that's, uh, well, said you know, you are a practitioner of psychic ability. You've yeah. got it. You just call it cop instinct. Mm-hmm. He said, oh, I hadn't thought about it that way. Well, you and I are going to be talking this hour about your new book. It's called Detect- uh, Psychic Detective Guidebook. And I'm anxious to hear what you have to say because I know that you've worked on on law enforcement cases. And uh, you know what? I My hat is off to you because I, I know that you're a person who is doing what you're doing to help other people. And in today's world, that, my friend, along with your psychic ability, is a true gift. So thank, thank you, you for doing what you're doing. Stand by, Dan. You and I have to take our first break. In Exonation, Dan Baldwin is my special guest for this hour. His website is danbaldwin.biz. And we're going to be talking to Dan about his new book, Psychic Detective Guidebook. Now, this is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Now, if you'd like to send me an email, it's exxon at exxonradiotv.com on all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV. And, um, of course, to find out what's on the air on the Exxon Broadcast Network, 24-7, 365, with our compliments, www.xzbn.net. And for the broadcast schedule of the Exxon TV channel and the great programming we have there, www.simultv.com. Dan Baldwin is my guest. I am Rob McConnell. We'll return. Don't go away. Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, join me, Rob McConnell, as together we'll investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here on the Exxon Radio TV show on XZBN and the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV. Since 1990, the Exxon Radio TV show has been the place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. Together, we'll investigate UFOs, aliens, ghosts, Bigfoot, psychic phenomena, lake monsters, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, the truth embargo, alien abductions, ESP, haunted locations from around the world, and so much more. With over 28 years of broadcasting and more than 4,500 individual guests, the Exxon is truly a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, as evidenced by the credibility, integrity, and professionalism of the guests that we bring to our international audience. If you have seen a UFO, had a close encounter, seen a ghost, Bigfoot, lake monster, or a story that you would like to share or have investigated, contact me, Rob McConnell, by sending me your email to xzone at xzoneradiotv.com or you can call toll-free 1-800-610-7035, extension 143, and on Skype, Exxon Radio TV. For more information on the Exxon Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, visit www.exxoneradiotv.com or www.exxonetvchannel.com or simultv.com and xzbn.net. Until next we meet here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Always remember X-Zone Nation. Keep your eyes to the sky and your heart in the light. You have heard of the X-Zone? Now watch it on Simul TV. Plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand worldwide and more does this sound like tomorrow's television well it is but you can have it today right now it is simul tv simul tv offers what the others only wish they could provide 15 exclusive channels like Zone, sci-fi and horror we are worldwide no other provider offers that 500 built-in video games no need to have an extra expensive system we have them included free video on demand live streaming events from around the world, interactive online network, and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. 
at Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at SimulTV.com. Do it today. So Nation, Dan Baldwin is my special guest this hour. His website is danbaldwin.biz. And for all Dan's books, you can visit um, fournightspress.com. And by the way, I, I love their logo. I guess we can call it a logo or their mission statement. I believe that if life gives you lemons, you should make lemonade. And try to find somebody whose life has given them vodka and have a party. <laughs> oh, you've got a philosophy, look. you know. I love it. I love it. Okay, Dan, tell us about your new book that we're going to be talking about, uh, the Psychic Detective Guidebook. What inspired you to write this book? Well, again, uh, as, I, as I'm moving into this other paranormal mm-hmm. investigation field, I, it occurred to me that I do have more than 15 years' experience in you know, real world out there uh, on the streets, psychic detecting. Right. And that's a lot of information. And I thought there are a lot of people out there who probably want to be psychic mm-hmm. detectives or at least are interested in how that really works. And I said, well, I can put all this information in a book and mm-hmm. it will be there for people to, uh, to read from, uh, from now on. So I put in there, you know, uh, a case studies of uh, true psychic detecting. I've interviewed some of the, the, the best, I mean, the finest practicing psychic detectives in the world uh, on an international level. And then my own experiences and my own, uh, you know, basically how-to steps to become a psychic detective. Detective. So who have you interviewed that are internationally acclaimed psychic detectives? Okay, well, uh, again, uh, my friend uh, Rhonda Ho will yeah. be one. He is a gifted intuitive. But also uh, Chris Robinson, the famous dream detective. Uh, Patricia Mona from up there in, in Canada, by the way. A very gifted psychic up there. Glenda Newton is one. A good friend of mine over here, uh, Dwayne Brock. Uh I've got a body language expert, Renata Mousseau, from over here in the Phoenix area. Just to, you know, try to, to spread it around a lot so that I can get a lot of different people with a lot of different perspectives and who have a lot of different gifts. Oh, all right. You, you interview all these different uh, psychics, and, and what do they, how do they contribute to, to your book, uh, Psychic Detective Guidebook? Do they, give, do they give ideas on how to become a psychic detective or how to enhance your psychic and your psychic ability so that you can become a psychic detective right exactly um okay what i wanted to do was i sent each one of them a uh, a, a very short list of questions mm-hmm. and i said fill this out and answer it whatever you want whatever way you wanted to to uh, to answer it and then i did not edit it their answer whatsoever so you get the uh, you know the undiluted perspective of each individual yeah, but they... Any questions there would, would include, like, you know, what advice mm-hmm. would you give to someone on developing your skills? What advice would you give to someone who is uh, looking to become a psychic detective? Um, and then ask them to tell a, a successful or even an unsuccessful unsuccess- case story. Well, but the idea is to, uh, undiluted, give mm-hmm. the reader real-world experience in, uh, experiences of real-world psychics, what it's really like. Okay, so what were some of the some of the aha moments that you had while you were putting this book together with all the information that these psychics had supplied you? I really didn't have an aha moment where anything new came mm-hmm. up because, uh, you know, like I said, I've been doing it for more than 15 years, right. and I know all these people. I've known them for most of those 15 years. Mm-hmm. So there, there wasn't any real surprise. So I, was why, just, I was just delighted and honored that they would agree to be part of my book. So why do the book if you knew everything that they were going to say. Why not write the book yourself? I wanted, uh, I wanted the, uh, the reader to have the perspective of different people practicing mm-hmm. different skills, skills from different parts of the world. I didn't just want it to be, uh, you know, this is the way Dan says it is, and that's the way it is. Right. How much variance is there in the techniques used by the different psychics? Oh, Lord, it, it crosses the board. Like I said, Renata is a body language expert. Uh, mm-hmm. Chris is a, uh, a dreamer. He will go to sleep with a problem on his mind, and he will dream about it, and then he'll wake up and he'll record the dream, and the symbols in his dream uh, 
will you know, relate to specific things. Uh, my friend Dwayne Brock is a very good pendulum dowser. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, you've got, the, you've got the full range of skills there. But how does being a psychic detective work with somebody who is using uh, pendulum dowsing or dream interpretation? Where does this fit into psychic phenomena? Well, that, I mean, that is psychic phenomena itself, and you're just using your skill to uh, answer questions. Like with the pendulum, mm-hmm. I will ask uh, yes or no questions. Right. Uh, you know, is, uh, for example, you get a, a, a missing person case. I will ask right off the bat, is this missing person physically alive? I get a yes or a no. And then I will try to locate, say, the missing person. You know, is this missing person in the United States? Is this missing person in uh, Arizona? Is this missing person in Maricopa County? Is this missing person in the city of Phoenix? You know, mm-hmm. kind of a, a yes or no uh, series of questions so that you narrow the box of uh, information around whatever you're looking to you get a, a final answer. And when it comes to psychic detective work, whether it's uh, yeah. the old psychic uh, way that people can usually associate a psychic or, or dowsing or dream interpretation, body language, what is the success rate when it comes to the accuracy of the answers that they supply? Yeah, that would I would say probably 80% would be a, 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 a good benchmark. Well, that's pretty good. Yeah, but then again, you know, it, it varies case mm-hmm. by case. Like, uh, for example, you know, I will have times when I am like 100% right on the money. I mean, mm-hmm. I will say the missing person is uh, at this place, and they'll find him within 300 feet. Other times, I will be like, uh, oh, you know, hundreds or thousands of miles off, wow. off base. It just depends on the, the situation. Psychics, like everybody else, have on days and off days. I was just going to say that you people are human yeah. as well, and everybody has on days or off days. Yeah, I, a psychic with a head cold is not going to be is not going to be as good as a psychic that's in good health. Well, a psychic with a head cold should find another psychic who who has a uh, a life that has given them vodka and party on. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. No problem. You know, one thing about being a psychic detective, mm-hmm. uh, it's like anything else. Uh, you know, if if you drink or do drugs or something yep. like that, it's gonna it's going to affect you. The same thing, uh, you know, if you have a fight with your spouse or you have a fight with your boss or mm-hmm. if you stub your toe, it's going to affect your reading just because you're a human being. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's why if if it's a really important case and most mm-hmm. of them are, I try to do at least three readings over at least three separate days, just because of that factor. The fact that psychics are humans and mm-hmm. Lord knows we're not perfect. Does the does the environment also affect the the psychic readings? For example, cell towers, the weather, uh, anything that is out of the control of the psychic. Does this affect your your ability and your accuracy? I would say only in the sense that it would affect your uh, your, your focus, as if you were reading a book or okay. doing study. In other words, if you've got a violent lightning storm outside, that's mm-hmm. going to draw your attention away from whatever you're doing. Okay, you know, whether it's a uh, you know, psychic work or, or studying your homework or doing a rep- mm-hmm. report for the boss. If yeah. there's a car wreck that suddenly happens outside, that's going to draw your focus away. The, the, um, the information that you gather from the person who is missing, is, is it like that they're using their, their, their brain or their, their unknown abilities to send out uh, an SOS beacon that they are unaware of that they're that they're actually sending out, and you as a psychic detective have the ability to pick up that that signal and home in on it. I do not have that gift. I have met a couple of people who who say that they do have mm-hmm. that gift. In other words, I can tell that you know a missing person is you know, over on the other side of the ridge or something like that. But right. I do not have that gift. Uh, one of the things that. Uh, the, you know, your, your your listeners and viewers should be aware of, psychic detectives generally get called in as kind of a last resort. Yeah. In other words, it's like, well, we've tried everything else. We may as well give the psychics a shot. Mm-hmm. Well, by that time, if it's a missing person case, chances are the missing person is, is already uh, deceased. So there's nobody there to give out a distress signal. In your opinion, who gives out a louder distress signal, so to speak? Is it a child, a teen? an adult or a senior, or is the signal all the same? I would say, uh, again, this is not from personal experience, mm-hmm. but from talking with people, the the strength of the signal actually de- uh, depends upon the uh, the energy behind it. 
So it doesn't matter whether it's an old person or a young right. person or a middle-aged person. It's the, the power of the fear or, or whatever that that uh, that powers that you know distress signal more than anything else. How many missing persons or how many uh, cases have you worked with with law enforcement? Oh, good lord, I don't know. It, it would be in the hundreds. Wow. Is, is well, you're the... talking fifteen years, so you know, one or two or three cases a month for fifteen years, it adds up. My, that many cases a month. Yeah. Do the law enforcement officers come to you, or do you volunteer your services? It it depends. Generally, um, they will come to us, mm-hmm. and uh, sometimes it'll be a family member who, who will come to us, the psychics. And in those cases, I recommend that you work. If you accept the case, work directly with the uh, the local authorities or whoever the authority is on that case. Right. But yeah, we've worked with. Uh, Oh, our local police, local sheriff's department. We work with the FBI. We have worked with you know the Forest Service. Uh, we have worked with uh, gendarmes. We have worked with uh, Cabinieri, whatever they call them over in Italy. Right. Uh, All it, right. All right. Stand by, Dan. You and I have to take our news break at the bottom of the hour. Our Exxon okay. Nation, Dan Baldwin, is our guest. www.danbaldwin.biz. And for all Dan's book, you can visit his publisher's website, www.fournight. Four Nights Press, and that's F O U R Nights, K N I G H T S, press.com. And Dan and I will return on the other side of this break as the Exxon continues right here on Simul TV and the Exxon Broadcast Network. I'm Rob McConnell. Don't go away. <laughs> From our broadcast studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, to the world and beyond, you're watching the Exxon Broadcast Network www.xzbn.net ABS Media Day. You have heard of the X Zone? Now watch it on Simul TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide. 15 exclusive channels like X-Zone, Sci-Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built-in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi Fi, you can still listen to the X Zone radio show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X Minus One? Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Rob McConnell here, presenting an overview for Nicholas Paul Jinnix, author of a fascinating book, Amen. It presents facts revealed by Egyptologists, facts that enable us to understand why Amen is the beginning of creation of God. 
It provides recommendations for religious leaders of the major religions to unify their beliefs and teach the Word of God, love one another. Amen informs people how mankind conceived God. It was the Egyptians that developed the concepts of a soul, a hereafter, and son of God. And finally, after the worship of many gods, they conceived the belief in one universal God, the maker of all there is. For more information, visit www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. Dan Baldwin is our guest, www.danbaldwin.biz. Dan, tell us about the most memorable case that you have worked on as a psychic detective. Most memorable? Yes, sir. That would be a toughie. Um, One would be, I guess, the... uh, I'm trying to think what would be the most, most fascinating for you readers. Possibly the... Oh, uh, I'm trying to remember what would be best. Well, just give us one that from the top of your head. Okay, well, one of the best, I guess, would be a case we worked up in um, uh, the, the Muggy on Rim area of uh, Arizona. We had a guy who went missing, mm-hmm. and he was an avid camper. He had a four-wheel drive. He was an avid, avid camper, a hiker, and his family knew that there was something wrong, but they only knew that he would be in Arizona or New Mexico or Utah or possibly uh, Colorado. So several of us got to, got to, were working on this case together, and each of us got, really at that time, just a piece of the puzzle. Uh, one person got the fact that the person was missing, uh, had stopped off at a small general store run by a little old man, and he had bought some camping supplies. That's all she got. Another person just got the number 260. That's all she got. Another person got that, uh, uh, this was a, one of, uh, someone I knew in Australia, she got a, a vivid, vivid impression of the, the, the place where the guy was camping. She described it, <clears throat> what turned out to be a perfect description of, uh, of the site. She said he was camped uh, near, a, near a dirt road, near a lake. There were some structures like corrals around him. It was a popular camping area. He was in a tent. And there were red stripes around the tree. She did not know what the red stripes were. Um, again, that was a perfect description of the location, but that, that description fit hundreds or thousands of locations you yeah. know, in those four states. You know, dirt road, trees, lake, sure. that sort of thing. You know, it's a perfect description, but there's it's absolutely no help whatsoever until you get to that location. Uh, I did my pendulum dowsing, and I got out my topological maps, and I, I doused a specific road you know, after you know, half a day at work. But I said, uh, if you follow this, this particular road, it was a forest road, and you go to X spot, there was, like, you know, a, 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 there was some kind of marker there, like a low water bridge. I said, he will be within one mile of, uh, north of that spot, 50 yards off the, uh, off the road. So if you go to that spot, walk 50 yards into the woods and go north, you'll find him within 15 minutes. So the, the family got this information they dashed up that area and they were on that road and uh, they met a guy coming out and they told him and showed him the the missing person folder and everything that they had he said oh yeah they found him this morning uh unfortunately he had committed suicide oh yeah and uh so they went to the site Mm -hmm. and it was uh exactly as the lady had described it it was uh Oh, the, 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 it was a, a tent, you know, had the, the clouds there, had the lake there, had the dirt road there. The red striping was painted, sprayed on by the uh, Forest Service. Who, they were going to thin out the trees. They had stopped at a little roadside stand, and uh, the guy had stopped there to buy some groceries from a little old man. Uh, the road that I, I had doused was off Highway number 260. And uh, when they got to the spot, he was 50 yards off the, directly off the road where I had doused that he was, where he was located. Amazing. Yeah, interesting thing about that is uh, when I did my uh, initial dowsing work, Mm -hmm. I got that he was physically alive but in extreme danger. 
So I think when I began my work, I had made contact uh, probably within minutes of the time that he had shot himself because I got he was definitely in a, in a life or death situation, but that he was he was physically alive. Is there a difference between the work that you do with the other psychics? For example, in this case, you had somebody in Australia and you had other psychics working with you around the United States. Is a little bit of this psychic and is this, or is this a little bit of what is known as remote viewing? Or are they, in your opinion, one and the same? I think they're one and the same. I've, I've toyed with remote viewing mm-hmm. uh, but I'm not. A, I haven't practiced it. But there's definitely something to that. I think that's another psychic ability. Uh, I like. I like to do dowsing because I can get more specific answers. Again, you could remote view, and mm-hmm. I could have drawn that. For example, the, I'm making this up. But say I had drawn that location where we where we found the the, the suicide. I could have drawn a perfect uh, description of the site, but you still wouldn't know where the site was. Now, when you, so I prefer, yeah, I prefer the pendulum because I can say, you know, is he on this road, this road, this road, or this road, and get a yes or no answer. But when you're doing this, asking these uh, questions to the pendulum, do you yeah. have a map in front of you? Do you, how do you narrow it in? Yeah. Okay. Um, sometimes I use a map. It depends on the situation. Mostly, I ask yes or no questions. Mm-hmm. You know, and you're not really asking the pendulum. You're allowing the the pendulum is something that distracts your conscious mind. That allows your subconscious mind to address the higher power, and you can define that higher power however you want to. But that's how you work it. You're getting the answer from a higher power, and I can sit down and just ask a list of yes or no questions. And like in this situation, you know, I, I did is yes or no. Is he in Arizona? Got a yes. Is he in Northern Arizona? Got a yes. Is he you know, so in, uh, is he the east of Pace in Arizona got a yes. At that point, I can get out a map, a topological map, and start, you know, honing in on it. You know, is he north of this road? Is he west of this road? Is he north of this bridge? That sort of thing. Wouldn't the pendulum also have the ability to, if you're holding it over a map, to kind of position itself over the area where the person is? Yeah, you can do that. In fact, you can take a, uh, you could take a ruler. Mm-hmm. And you know, just say uh, address the uh, the higher higher consciousness and say, you know, uh, give me a yes movement when I'm on the east west you know east west latitude. And when you get a yes, you draw a line. And you can do it the, the other way. Give me a yes when I uh, am crossing the uh, the north south line. When you get a yes from your pendulum, you can draw a, a downward line, and all of a sudden X marks the spot. Yeah. There there it is. When you're working, once again, with all the different psychics that you worked with on this case, does this amplify the collective's psychic ability? I, I really don't think so, and then that's just my personal opinion, because we're all working separately. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're a psychic detective and you're working with a group, which I recommend, uh, I recommend that you work separately and then compare notes, because if you work together at first, you're probably going to influence somebody else. How so? Well, in other words, say uh, say I'm a beginning psychic, yeah, and I'm working with a very experienced psychic. Uh, either one of us may be equally right, equally wrong. But if I'm the young guy and this this uh, more experienced person gets an answer, I'm going to be intimidated, and, I, and that may shade my answer, may may shade my reading. So I advise do your reading by yourself, get get all that done, and then if you want to, go ahead and compare notes and see where you, what see what you come up with. You were saying that the answers come from the higher power. How would you describe yeah. that? Who is the higher power? What is the higher power? Is this the Akashic Records? Is this the spiritual realm? How do you describe it to people who are not psychics or who are, for the first time, listening in saying, what's the higher power? Yeah, I uh, when I do my pendulum classes, I don't like to get involved in discussions of religion. Mm-hmm. So I define the power, higher power, as a great big, nice pink saw something in the sky. Why pink? Uh, it's a pretty soft color. Oh, I guess so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I just don't want to get involved in uh, if I, when I'm teaching a class, I don't mm-hmm. want to get involved in a religious discussion because that takes us away. But you would, uh, you know, define it however you want to. God, the Akashic Records, right. the universe. I, yeah, I just don't get into that. How long do your courses take, and uh, what's involved? Oh, generally, I, you know, like the local library will call up and say, hey, can you do a course? So I'll do about an hour. 
an hour course, and I just kind of do a, a, a basically a, a demonstration mm-hmm. and then ask questions. So and the, the, the the pendulum work is is very simple. It, it's time consuming and at times arduous, but the process is is extremely simple. What is the pendulum made of? Is it a piece of uh, like a gold chain or silver chain with a crystal at the bottom? It doesn't matter. For, I'll give you an example. We were doing a, uh, Dwight Ron and I were doing a search down in a ghost town, uh, actually a cemetery of a ghost town mm-hmm. down in uh, near Tombstone, Arizona, a place called uh, the Cortland Cemetery. And I forgot my pendulum. For some reason, I had just left it. So uh, we stepped out, I stepped out of my truck, stepped back in, cut a shoestring from an old pair of shoes, picked up a rock on the floor, tied a string around the rock, and that was my pendulum. Wow. And it worked? Yeah, there's nothing there, There's nothing whatsoever magic about the pendulum. It's just a weight on the string. And uh, what that weight is is totally irrelevant. But if it's not magic, what is it? Again, it's just a way, it's, a, it's an instrument. It's a way of uh, connecting with that higher power. All psychic work is connecting with a higher power of some kind. And this is, for me, this is just the best, most effective way of uh, connecting with that higher power. In your opinion, I would like to be able to do it, you know, w- w- without the pendulum. But that, those are my training wheels right now. Gotcha. That's and uh, we're, we've got to take a break very shortly. But yeah. in your in your opinion, can anyone learn how to be a, a pendulum dowser? Yes. Like I said, the the process is extremely simple. Uh, the discipline is hard. The discipline is very hard, but the process itself uh, you can pick up in no time. All right, stand by, Dan. You and I have to take our final break for this hour. Exo Nation, Dan Baldwin is our guest. www.danbaldwin.biz is his website. And to find out where you, or where you can go to buy Dan's books, www.4nightspress.com. This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell, Dan, uh, Dan Baldwin, and I will be back on the other side of this break as we wrap up this hour here in the Exxon from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't forget the X Chronicles newspaper with our compliments each and every month. Brand new, minimum 92 pages to read online or download at www.xchroniclesnewspaper.com. Plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide 15 exclusive channels like X Zone, Sci Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at SimulTV.com. Do it today. Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, join me, Rob McConnell, as together we'll investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here on the Exxon Radio TV show on XZBN and the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV. Since 1990, the Exxon Radio TV show has been the place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. Together, we'll investigate UFOs, aliens, ghosts, Bigfoot, Psychic phenomena, lake monsters, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, the truth embargo, alien abductions, ESP, haunted locations from around the world, and so much more. With over 28 years of broadcasting and more than 4,500 individual guests, the X-Zone is truly a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, as evidenced by the credibility, integrity, and professionalism of the guests that we bring to our international audience. If you have seen a UFO, had a close encounter, seen a ghost, Bigfoot, lake monster, or a story that you would like to share or have investigated, contact me, Rob McConnell, by sending me your email to xzone at xzoneradiotv.com or you can call toll-free 1-800-610-1111. 
7035 extension 143 and on Skype Exxon Radio TV. For more information on the Exxon Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, visit www.exxoneradiotv.com or www.exxonetvchannel.com or simultv.com and xzbn.net. Until next we meet here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Always remember X-Zone Nation. Keep your eyes to the sky and your heart in the light. Dan Baldwin is my special guest this hour, Exonation, www.danbaldwin.biz. And his publisher, where you can buy Dan's books, www.fournightspress.com. And Dan, there was another website you'd like to uh, let our listeners know about it. Yeah, if, uh, if your uh, folks would like to follow our psychic adventures, Dwight, Rhonda, and I have a site, uh, www.believeparanormal.com. And that's Billy spelled with two E's, B-E-E-L-I-E-V-E. Now, you also have a book that teaches people how to douse, am I correct? Yeah, if people are interested in, in, in learning how to douse, my book is called The Practical Pendulum, and it's a very basic how-to guide on uh, how, to, how to do the practical pendulum. And uh, I touch briefly on the metaphysical aspects of it, but really it it's, uh, covers just the basics of it. Yeah, this is this is what it is. This is how you do it. This is what to watch out for. That sort of thing. What's the difference between the dowsing that you do and the dowsing that we're all familiar with from watching Western movies? When you've got the dowser <laughs> who comes in with a Y-shaped uh, branch or twig and goes out into the field, and all of a sudden you see them shaking the, you know, the uh, the uh, w- the long yeah, the part. witching stick. Yeah, goes down. Yeah, they call it the witching stick. Yeah, there's no difference whatsoever, uh, except for the fact that you're using a different tool. That's it's it. the same uh, mentally and psychically. It's the same process whether you're using a dowser, a, da- uh-huh. a rod, a dowsing rods, the L rods is what they call them, or a witching stick or a pendulum. It's it's the same basic psychic process. You're just using a different tool. For those listeners who weren't with us the last time you were with us, and we were talking about uh, the work that you did in the old western towns. Can you share a couple yeah. of stories with us? Oh, God, that, uh, this is one of the reasons that it's so fascinating. It's really, I'm, I'm drawn to this, is that uh, Dwight, Rhonda, and I uh, mm-hmm. are really Old West fanatics. And we, uh, we believe that one of the best ways to study what actually happened in the Old West is to interview the people who lived there at the time. That makes sense. So we go out to ghost towns or ghost ranches or abandoned mines mm-hmm. and try to make contact with the spirits that are out there and basically do research. How willing are the spirits to uh, to sharing their past or their lives with you? Uh, very willing, and I think that's due to our attitude. We go out, uh, we're very respectful. We don't challenge anybody. We don't mm-hmm. confront anybody. We go in, uh, our, our, our approach is, if you're going into a haunted house, you're still going into a house where somebody lived. You're going into their house, and we go into their house as if we would uh, the house of a living person. We ask permission to go in ask permission to speak with them, and we're very friendly and open. And we seem to be getting an awful lot of responses. And one of the things that that is unique about our book is that we have extended conversations. In other words, we don't just grab a, a, an EVP, electric voice phenomenon, right. and say, hey, we got something. We actually have you know extended conversations with the spirits, and mostly they're very willing to talk. I would imagine that the spirits who are willing to talk do not get the opportunity very often because I'm sure that when other groups or other researchers go in who love to tantalize and who love to challenge and why this is done, I have no idea, except for the sensationalism that people thrive these days. They they shun away. So when when they have the opportunity of speaking to somebody like yourself and and your two colleagues, 
they welcome the chan- the, the the ability to to share their life. Do do any of them ever question as to why they're still there if they're dead? No, uh, we ask them the same question. And uh, one of the things we are learning, and again, mm-hmm. we're we're we are not experts at this thing. We are students. We learn right. something new every time we go out. But one of the things we are finding is that once you cross over, you have an awful lot of options. And some of those options include coming back over to this side. And the reason for coming over to this side are really varied. Uh, we're finding people who come back over to uh, relive a, a very happy experience or just to come back over and uh, relive a peaceful experience. A lot of people come back over to help people who are trapped on this side to go ahead and cross over. Could it be then that what we call guardian angels are actually guardian spirits? That could be. Could very well be. Who are, Have you come across any famous uh, people that we might know from history in your investigations into the Old West? Yeah, um, very rarely. Mostly we run into to, you know, folks, yeah. just, just folks. But we ran into, uh, I guess, one of our favorites would be Maddie Earp. Wow. Celia Ann Blaylock, the common law wife of Wyatt Earp. We have spoken with her several times. And uh, we kind of consider her an unofficial member of the team. What is but she? Maddie has, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, Maddie has taught us an awful lot about uh, about uh, the old West and about her life. She had an extremely tragic life. What's it like being involved with history at such a unusual level? It's it's fascinating. Uh, one, you you, know, you learn a lot. Also, at times, it it can be extremely emotional. We have helped people cross over from this side to the other side, with the help of spirits. So, you know, like Dwight, Rhonda, and I will be working to, to free a spirit mm-hmm. with the help of someone who's come back over to help that spirit cross over. It can be uh, extremely emotional. Has there ever been a time when you've actually seen a, a full-bodied apparition or experienced um, a, a touch, a whisper, um, a feeling, a scent, uh, when when communicating with the spirits of the Old West. Yeah, and that's something that Dwight and Rhonda are much more gifted at that area than I am. They've been doing it you know, all their lives. Uh, they can actually, uh, you know, when the energy is there, they can actually mm-hmm. see a spirit or at least an image of a spirit, or they can definitely sense a spirit. And uh, the, all three of us have heard heard a voice, and every once in a while you'll, you'll, you'll get a scent or, a, or a, a feeling, something like that. But that's that's more uh, more their skill than mine. But, but overall, the answer is yes. You are saying that it's very emotional at times, and you've helped spirits cross with yep. the help of other spirits. Can you explain how this happens, or or how, what you and and your two friends do in order to accomplish such a wonderful thing? Yeah, definitely. Uh, a good example. Uh, simple, well, well, the first time we went out, we didn't know if our, our skills would mesh. You know, can intuitives work with mm-hmm. a dowser? Can we make contact? Is it worth the effort? We went to a place called the Cortland Jail, which is not eh, 14, 15 miles out of Tombstone. It's a, it's a ghost town. We were in the jail, and we recorded this, and we, we realized, you know, we've made contact with someone, and this was a man who had killed somebody, and he was afraid to cross over because of uh, he, he, was, he feared punishment on mm-hmm. the other side. So we're, you know, we're working with the guy, and Rhonda's real good about conversing with spirits uh, to help them cross over. And uh, we discovered there was another spirit there right. with us. And this was the spirit of the person he had killed, who had, who had crossed over. And basically he had come back to say, hey, you're forgiven. It's, there's nothing to be afraid of. It's okay to cross over. And when we found that that was, you know, me, Dwight, and Rhonda, and a ghost, a spirit, helping another ghost, another spirit, go into the light, so to speak. And when that happened, it, it went like, bam, it was like that. And I said, they're gone. And, you know, the three of us just teared up just instantly. Do you feel, so, a, do you feel a difference in, in, the, in the atmosphere? Do you, how do you know the person's gone? I, I, I know for, from experience that... Pet owners, when they, when that the final moments of a pet's time on this side of the veil is over, and the and the spirit or the soul moves on, they smell roses. They feel a difference in the uh-huh. atmosphere. But when it comes to the spirit crossing, 
going to the light. How does it feel to you as as one of the people who are making this transition happen? Yeah, well, again, I'm just speaking from my personal experience. Yes, of course. The, 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 the very few times that this that we've that we've done this only happened a couple of times, mm-hmm. but uh, the emotion was overpoweringly uh, oh, I, we teared up, almost bawling, but in wow. a good sense, in a good sense, and it was instantaneous. It wasn't like a you know, you at a you're at a speech or somebody's funeral or whatever, and it, it builds and builds and builds until you're finally crying. It's right. like bam, and you know, there's no way to fake that. That's true. It just it, it just happens, and you know it. I mean, it, when it happens to you, you know something has happened, and something uh, very important has just happened, and you were part of it. So what's next for you and your two friends and your exploits? So where are you going to be going? Well, we just finished a, uh, a draft of our second book, follow-up book, and we're going to be submitting that to publishers. And then uh, we're looking at exploring more ghost towns, Exploring more ghost mines, exploring more more haunted areas, and uh, try to learn more about the, the old Southwest from the people who lived it. Sounds like a plan. Well, as soon as you get that other book out, let us know. We'll get you back on. Uh, I will let you know probably with uh, in a very short amount of time. That's great. I hope you're always wel- you're always welcomed here, Dan. Hey, I love your show. Thank you, sir. Let our listeners know your website, your publisher's website, and. Um, the website that where you do all your blogging so that listeners can go and visit. Okay, the the blogging, you can go to www.fournightspress.com. Mm-hmm. If you want to track us on what we're doing uh, you know, in the psychic world, just uh, www.believeparanormal.com. That's believe with two E's. Right. And you can get our books you know, wherever you order your books. I mean, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, wherever wherever you can order our books. And they're available in ebook and paperback. Dan, I want to thank you so much for joining us. Take care of yourself, my friend. Keep the great work up, and I look forward to the next time you and I meet back here in the Exxon. It's been a pleasure. Take care, Dan. Exxon Nation, my guest this hour has been Dan Baldwin. His website is www.danbaldwin.biz. We'll be back on the other side of this break. For those of you who are watching us on the Exxon TV channel and Simul TV, And also for those of you listening around the world on iHeartRadio, Mutual Broadcast Network, and the Exxon Broadcast Network. My name is Rob McConnell. Don't go away. Whether you're a skeptic or a believer... Join me, Rob McConnell, as together we'll investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here on the Exxon Radio TV show on XZBN and the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV. Since 1990, the Exxon Radio TV show has been the place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. Together, we'll investigate UFOs, aliens, ghosts, Bigfoot, psychic phenomena, lake monsters, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, the truth embargo, alien abductions, ESP, haunted locations from around the world, and so much more. With over 28 years of broadcasting and more than 4,500 individual guests, the X-Zone is truly a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, as evidenced by the credibility, integrity, and professionalism of the guests that we bring to our international audience. If you have seen a UFO, had a close encounter, seen a ghost, Bigfoot, lake monster, or a story that you would like to share or have investigated, contact me, Rob McConnell, by sending me your email to xzone at xzoneradiotv.com or you can call toll-free 1-800-610-7035, extension 143, and on Skype, Exxon Radio TV. For more information on the Exxon Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, visit www.exxoneradiotv.com or www.exxonetvchannel.com or simultv.com and xzbn.net. Until next we meet here in the Exxon from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Always remember Exxon Nation. Keep your eyes to the sky and your heart in the light. You have
have heard of the X Zone? Now watch it on Simo TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide. 15 exclusive channels like X Zone, Sci Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today.